They came by the thousands to become a part of the solution to the biggest epidemic facing our state. Taking drugs is maybe the most selfish thing you can do. By a show of hands, how many people personally know somebody or know of somebody who has died from a drug overdose? Good Lord. In an emotional plea, grieving parents urge these students to not become another life lost. Do this for your family, your friends, and most importantly, yourself. Do this for all of us standing up here, all of us who have an empty chair at the table for the rest of our lives. A summit empowering the young to take a stand for their future. What you're doing today is the start of a national movement. I could not be more proud and excited. Let's make this youth summit a turning point for the United States of America against drug abuse. Change begins here today with you. Good evening to you. It was a monumental summit that we hope will save lives. The empowering of our youth to spread the message of the painful impact of drug addiction and to turn the tide on this deadly epidemic. The staggering numbers tonight, 90% of addictions start in the teen years. And right now, 10 million young people aged 12 to 29 are in need of treatment for substance abuse and addiction. And that is why this group is being empowered. Manchester Mayor Ted Gatz has told them, this is all about you. You are the warriors we need to save lives. I got a question for you guys. By a show of hands, how many people personally know somebody or know of somebody who has died from a drug overdose? Good Lord. It was a silent moment from the summit that spoke volumes about the crisis New Hampshire faces. In short, opioids are destroying lives at all levels of society. We're talking about a very deadly substance and something that literally can take over your life in a short period of time. In the last few years, New Hampshire has seen a massive surge in opioid use and drug overdoses. In 2016, more than 400 people died from drug overdoses in our state. Per capita, we had the third highest drug death rate in the country. In reality, when you talk to young adults... Are a lot of kids taking drugs? Yes. 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 <laughs> drugs are a common theme. Kids in high school talking about drugs. Some. Like, not all the time, though. Most. Most. We've lost too many kids in our community and free from our school alone of drug-related deaths, and that's been very hard to go to their funerals and wakes. I don't want to have that happen to any more of us. I know my friend who is juggling addiction right now, and I tell her that I tell her that she's not alone, and she has me with her. Like I'm with her for every step she takes. It's not always just the kids that are dealing with um, substance abuse themselves. Oftentimes they are in a household where all of the adults, the parents, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents are, are addicted in some way, shape or form. The city of Nashua opened up a safe station program back in November. In those few short months, more than 200 people have come to their doors seeking help. The reason we saw this spike in addiction, New Hampshire had a strong demand for pills. So heroin dealers targeted the area with a cheaper, often more powerful alternative. I don't think adults understand that now there's that bridge. There's that bridge between, you know, recreational use of, of substances and ultimately the use of heroin and fentanyl, which is just incredibly deadly. Next thing you know, they're going to three, four, five, six dollar a bag heroin. Um, and it can literally happen overnight. Which can lead to overdoses and death. In perhaps the most moving moment of the summit, a group of parents took the stage with photos of loved ones lost to drugs. Each one of us will never share a story or a moment with our child ever again. Included up here, Paula Walsh. Her son, Mark, a father of three, went from a prescription to worse. When they cut him off, he ended up picking up heroin, and it took over his life. And he used a loan 10 days after he got out of treatment, and he died. 
New Hampshire's tough fight against this epidemic has been noticed by those who lead our nation. A surprise guest at the summit was U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions. We will share his message to the huge crowd coming up. The students got a special welcome from Mark Wahlberg, who couldn't make it to the summit. Hey guys, Mark Wahlberg here. I want to say that I'm sorry that I can't be with you, but I want to welcome you all to this amazing event. I also want to encourage you to make good choices when it comes to your life. So way too many young people are dying because they're making the wrong choices when it comes to drugs. Drug free is up to me and I choose to be drug free. Hope you guys are going to make the same choice. It's a phrase that may slip off the tip of your tongue at times of regret. If only... If only I... If only. And that is the title of the Wahlberg Foundation's short film shown at the summit. It chronicles Isaac, a high school teen who gets addicted to popping pills. He doesn't just get pills from friends, but also from home, something that's all too common. More than half of parents surveyed say anyone can access their medicine cabinet. The movie also spotlights how even drugs that are prescribed can get abused. So why do you take them? Because they give me a buzz, and I need a buzz to get through this day, you know that. Through the help of family, Isaac takes the brave step and gets help. But one of his close friends loses his battle with addiction and dies from an overdose. From the big screen to reality. The program took an emotional real-life turn when dozens of people gathered on the stage, each with their own story of heartache, brought together by one common factor. Their loved one died from a drug overdose. For an East Kingston couple, they're turning the loss of their son into a cause. It all started with their message to other families in their son's obituary. Please stop before you or your loved one thinks that no drug is too powerful. There is no turning back and no do-overs. Died in September 2015, so it's just about a year and a half. It's a club that no one wants to belong to. A club that's gaining new, unwilling members every single day. She wrote a great obituary that by the time we got home from the funeral home, the phone was ringing. In 2015, Jim and Jean Moser went public with every parent's nightmare in a heart-wrenching obituary. This week, they took their message to thousands of students, delivering it on a massive stage at SNHU Arena. For all of us standing up here, this is not a movie. It's real. Each one of us is holding a photo of our loved one whom we have lost to the pain of an opioid addiction. There is strength in numbers, so they say, but on this day, strength went hand in hand with tears. So many tears from the moms and dads and sisters and brothers who stood behind the Mosers, grasping framed photos losses so profound and yet so abundant. Each one of us will never share a story or a moment with our child ever again. Each one of us will never share a laugh, a hope or a dream. We'll never have the chance to throw a baseball or toss a Frisbee in the backyard, enjoy their smile, share a meal, or even take a walk with them ever again. Adam's parents say their eldest child was magnetic. People were drawn to his energy, his zeal for life. How could we have missed this? You know, how did, because we didn't even know Adam had any drug problem at all. We, I remember saying to him at, life, at dinner, you made, he never really got a good occupation going, but as far as life and his engagement and the way he engaged people, he was awesome. What's probably missing so much? He was just so much fun, you know? He just, you know, he knew when to talk, when not to talk. You know, he knew what to say, what not to say. He didn't take over a room, but he was a big part of it, you know? Adam had a secret. Friends later told his parents he called it a hobby. And it started right at home. Prescription pain pills that apparently were disappearing from our own cabinet at home. When that source ran dry, Adam did what so many do when they realize their body is demanding an opioid. Nothing less will do. He then 
started buying them on the street. And online. Online and on the street. And only after he died, when we met many of his friends, one of the friends said, well, you know, now, now I understand why he never had any money. The Mosers held nothing back. They say their 27-year-old knew what he was putting in his body that fateful night. Did he know it was fentanyl he was taking? He did. He did confide to someone that evening, right after he had taken it, that he had... I just took the most powerful drug, fentanyl. A year and a half later, fentanyl has come front and center in New Hampshire's drug crisis, exponentially outpacing heroin and other drugs in the medical examiner reports as cause of death. But Adam's parents are confident their son had no idea what fentanyl would do to his body. That's why we, in the talk today, we talk about this stops you from breathing. Adam wasn't alone the night he died. But his dear friends didn't recognize the symptoms of overdose. They simply thought he'd had too much to drink and just needed a nap and some water. They all went out and got a, got a, uh, a hamburger and came back and he's dead. The Mosers also learned too late that their son was trying to overcome his addiction on his own. They say he had a Suboxone packet in his pocket the night he died. That the whole stigma of addiction, he bottled it up, thought he could take care of it himself and that's not a battle anybody can win alone are you mad is anger part of it oh anger is a big part of it um, frustration it, it's frustration but uh, you know for me I know I had an angry time I was really Who are you angry. mad at I was mad at him yeah. I was mad at him um, and then you know now obviously we're we're more kicking ourselves for not having the conversation but I was really angry. Like, why would you do it? Why, why would you take something that you didn't know what it was going to do to you? The death of a child often leads to the end of a marriage. Not for the Mosers. They are a united front, turning their heartache into a mission that started with the obituary. This month, they sent this letter to 700 supporters, media outlets, friends, and loved ones, announcing their new campaign called Zero Left, urging everyone to keep their meds out of sight, locked up, and disposed of as soon as possible. We thought, how could we miss this? How can you not have that conversation in a home? And going forward, we're just laying that out there so that others do have that conversation. Speaking at the Opioid Youth Summit continued the Moser's commitment to spread the word, to have the conversation. And all of us standing here today together represent the tens of thousands across the country who are in this identical situation. Tens of thousands of lives lost every year in this great country of America, enough to fill this stadium several times over. The film that the Mosers produced called Just the One Time will be shown at Exeter High School at the end of March. That's right. You can also find the 15-minute documentary on YouTube as well. Tonight, New Hampshire senators are fighting in Washington for more funding and more attention to this crisis that's devastating families here in the Granite State. We wanted to share their messages to the students. I urge you to take this personally. Make the fight against opioids your fight, because this is truly a matter of life and death, and failure is not an option. It is up to all of us in every community throughout New Hampshire to work together to combat this crisis and to end the stigma of addiction that prevents so many in our state from reaching out to get help. Coming up immediately following this show at 8 p.m., we have a chance for you to get your questions answered. We will be live on the WMUR Facebook page with some Granite Staters who have been on the front lines of this opioid crisis, but all from different points of view. And coming up next, from the top of the world to nothing. How addiction led an all-star pitcher with a bright future to lose it all. I could either get up and walk 33 miles back home, or I could sit there and basically just sit there and essentially die. His message of warning ahead, and when he finally made the decision, 
to become sober. Plus, there is help for anyone dealing with addiction anytime and anywhere in the Granite State. NHtreatment.org has a full list of recovery and treatment resources here in the Granite State.